Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast game review. Kyle Katarn returns after a bit of a break to the Jedi Affairs. The full explanation is a bit more than I should get into here, but, well, the short the summary is basically he has to get Jan, Jan Ors, back. And, yeah, that kind of, you know, someone takes her and, yeah, it's basically the, you know, male lead hero wants to, you know, get the people who may have harmed the heroine, and that's kind of it. But they do work in the elements from, some elements from the first Jedi Knight quite nicely, and it is a fun game, and you do meet some guests from the Star Wars universe, including Luke Skywalker, and you, you explore the Star Wars galaxy some after the movies. What this has to offer, more than anything else, is gameplay. The technology has improved vastly since 1997, so the force powers and the lightsaber mechanics are much smoother and more evened out. The, the ragdoll physics have now, you know, entered first-person shooters and the like. The game is from 2002, I believe, and that is, that has obvious applications both as far as lightsaber and force powers go. You can still pull weapons out of the enemy's hands, but you can now also pull the entire enemy to the ground. Or you can shove him off a cliff. Excuse me. And using force grip, you can use them as a human shield, you can smash them into a wall if you want to. And the force powers are more overall useful, I would say. Force Lightning is more versatile than the old single bolt of lightning. And we do again have the nice strict separation between the light side, which is healing and defensive, and the dark side, which is aggressive and destructive. The lightsaber now has far more moves and no less than three different stances. The basic, you know, quick and relatively weak, slow and quite strong, and then a nice medium. And all three have their definite uses. You again can use it against both groups of enemies armed with guns and you know the occasional boss enemy who also has a lightsaber there are far more lightsaber battles than in the old one without it being too many it never really gets to be commonplace or boring when you fight with the lightsaber you can now, unfortunately, also throw it all the time, which I personally think takes a lot of the fun out of it. And even if you don't use it, the enemies will. But, anyway... You really get the sense of being a Jedi in this game. You really have this feeling of a lot of power at your hands, you know, literally at your fingertips, and 
also, you know, the responsibility. If that doesn't sound too boring. The weapons are great. We again have a pretty nice variety with, you know, blasters and the Wookiee Bowcaster, grenades, proximity mines, rocket launcher, you know, the average setup. There's even a sniper rifle. And yes, it is kind of sci fi ish. If you use it to its full power, it literally evaporates the enemy. Single player is a lot of fun, but until you get the lightsaber back, it is kind of plain and you're kind of just wanting to get to the part where you get to use the lightsaber and the force powers. The first one did not really mess around with that. It you don't start with the lightsaber in the first one, but it doesn't take long to get it. In this one, it does feel like it takes its sweet time getting there, and I think that might have been a mistake. Multiplayer is great fun, and it's very well supported. It's very stable, and you know, there are several different ways of playing it. You know, obviously just free-for-all and capture the flag, but there's also team free-for-all where you play for either the light side or the dark side, and capture the, I'm gonna botch this completely, Isalamiri or something like that, which is a creature that completely prevents the use of force powers, which means that once you've captured it, you can't just use force speed to rush back, you know, you can't even use force jump, you can only jump as tall you know, as, tall as a human being could. But, no one can use force powers against you while you're holding it either, so they have to, you know, kill you using either guns or lightsaber. There's also quite a few mods for it, so you know, one can't really complain that it's the same thing over and over, and you know, plenty of people have made levels, extra levels for multiplayer also. The graphics are also a great improvement, and there's a pretty natural sense to many of the graphics. The green screened live-action cutscenes are done away with in favor of all in-engine scripted sequences. And these work out okay. There's a reasonable level of expression to faces and bodies. But yeah, and models, skins look quite good. Lighting effects. The lightsaber looks fantastic. It really is kind of the the 97 game, the first Jedi Knight, the lightsaber looks like it did in the old movies, in the original trilogy. In this game, the lightsabers look like they do in the new trilogy. And let's face it, the new trilogy didn't have much to offer other than superior effects. And that's what there is to say about that.